DCS, Dynamic Condylar Screw System. We will treat an intraarticular Y fracture of the distal femur with the DCS system. First, the DCS lag screw holds both the condylar fragments together. And then the DCS plate, which lies along the lateral cortex, connects the condylar fragments to the shaft. The operation is performed with the patient in the supine position, the injured leg slightly elevated. The femur is approached laterally. The smooth anatomical reconstruction of the articular surface is followed by retention using reduction forceps. Preliminary fixation of the articular fracture with two K wires. The wires should be as perpendicular as possible to the fracture surface and should not interfere with the subsequent position of the DCS screw. The two wires are replaced in the usual way by two Kinsella screws with washers. These screws exert compression on the two condyles. Make sure once again that the articular surface has been anatomically reduced. To determine the entry point of the DCS screw, we view the femur from the lateral aspect and divide the largest sagittal diameter of the condyle into three even parts. Two centimeters from the knee joint, mark the bone at the intersection of the anterior and middle third. To determine the direction of the DCS screw, mark the knee joint axis with a K wire, here in green. The DCS screw should be perpendicular to the lateral condyle and parallel to the knee joint axis. A second wire, red, therefore marks the position perpendicular to the condyle. Insert a guide pin using the small air drill and the small chuck. It should be parallel to both wires and penetrate the medial condyle. The assistant surgeon to the right checks that the guide pin is parallel to the condylar wire. The surgeon makes sure that it's parallel to the knee joint axis. The guide pin should not perforate the opposite cortex. In the clinic, we would now check the position with an image intensifier. The measuring device shows the length of the guide pin which has been drilled into the bone. In our model, it measures 80 millimeters. The DCS screw and, of course, the bore hole should stop 10 millimeters short of the medial wall of the distal femur. The bore depth measures 80 minus 10, therefore 70 millimeters. Ream the hole with the DCS triple reamer. It differs from the reamer for the dynamic hip screw. The parts cannot be interchanged. Assemble the reamer. In this case, adjust the depth to 70 millimeters and fix the position with the knurled nut. The front part drills the hole for the lag screw. The middle portion drills a larger diameter hole for the barrel of the plate, and the back part countersinks the cortex for the connection between the plate and barrel. Place the reamer into the universal drill and slide it over the guide pin. Drill the tunnel for the DCS screw in one procedure. If the guide pin has been loosened during drilling, it's important that it be correctly repositioned. To do so, insert the centering sleeve into the drill hole and place a long DCS lag screw backwards into the sleeve. The guide pin can easily be repositioned using this system as a guide. In our plastic models, as well as in hard Kinsella's bone, threads must be pre-cut with the DCS tap. Slip the centering sleeve over the tap with attached T-handle and fix with the nut. Slide the tap over the guide pin. Place the centering sleeve in the drill hole and tap the entire bore depth. In other words, until the 70 millimeter mark reaches the lateral cortex.
Choose a 65 mm DCS screw, 5 mm shorter than the bore depth of 70 mm. The flattened outer side of the lag screw corresponds to the inner shape of the barrel. Slide the barrel of the plate over the wrench. Take care that the flange of the wrench and the slot of the screw properly interdigitate. The coupling screw within the wrench is then screwed into the inner thread of the DCS lag screw and tightened. Slide the entire assembly over the guide pin into the borehole. Drive the screw in until the 5 mm mark on the DCS wrench reaches the lateral cortex. This means that the tip of the screw is 10 mm away from the medial wall. In osteoporotic bone, the screw can be inserted 5 mm deeper. After the last turn, the T-handle of the wrench must be parallel to the femoral shaft. This way, the DCS screw is in its correct position to allow the plate to slide over the screw. Remove the centering sleeve and slide the plate barrel over the lag screw onto the bone. Impact the plate against the femoral shaft. Remove the coupling screw and, using the small air drill in reverse, remove the guide pin. Insert the compression screw. This produces interfragmental compression of the joint fragments. The hole for a cancellous screw is drilled through the most distal plate hole. The length is measured. And a cancellous screw inserted, producing further interfragmental compression of the condyles. Axial compression of the supracondylar fracture plane is produced using the articulated tension device. No screw is placed through the fracture area. The remaining plate screws are inserted. At the time of hardware removal, the plate screws are taken out first, followed by the DCS plate. For removal of the DCS lag screw, the wrench with the coupling screw is needed. The wrench is placed over the DCS screw and the coupling screw attached. The DCS lag screw can then be removed without difficulty.